I'd like to know what the place was used for. At this site, um, well, I can see across the river there was lots of um, flour mills and stuff, but I'm sure there was there's a lot more that's happened way before then, and maybe it was um, a site of Indian burial grounds. I have no idea, and it makes me realize that I do not know very much about my community <laughs> and the sacred sites in it. In our view, as indigenous people, it is all sacred. This entire Makoche, the land, is Wakang. Makoche Wakang, um, sacred land. Um, it might not look that way today because of the effects of colonization, and the concrete and the electric wires and the sound of the railroads and the trucks and airplanes and all that, but the land in its placement and the relationship between sky and earth. Um, as relatives, we are connected between that sky and earth. And it's those relationships um, that are rooted in this land where the ancestors walked and where we still feel them. Uh, that is what, a, to me, a sacred site is. To me, a sacred site is some place that Indian people would gather to pray. Um, sometimes they would go to these places to trade with each other or, or meet with other tribes. But there were places that we always went to do certain things, specific things, that we always considered holy or important to, to our people. So for me, you know, I, I, I value many of the sites that are, that are, are sacred to Native American people, but it's, it's not that's not my culture. I'm not Native American, so you know I'm I'm learning from them about what they what they consider important about those places. So it's you know I'm a student of their culture to learn why they value those places and why you know how it relates to their history and to their culture and to their communities. A dwelling place for spirits. It's, you know, a place that for me is also very special, not just for those reasons, but sacred to me as well because it's a place that was very important to my family, that I was brought down here as a child and told that this was a very special place and came down here again and again and again. Um, but it took on greater significance for me at the time at which I became spiritually attuned to energy, uh, a force, a life force that was here as well and that I've carried with me and so I keep coming back to this place for that reason. Coldwater Spring is sacred to the Native American community and I believe it's also sacred to the pagan community mm -hmm. here in Minneapolis and in, and in an extended area around here. Mm -hmm. I know it was used by the Native Americans uh, for a long time. I've come here a lot to get the water and <clears throat> we leave um, tobacco as an offering when we do that most of the time and we come here for rituals. For several years I've come here on the anniversary of my husband's death. This is a picture of him, Seth Garwood, when he was 30 years old. <clears throat> and we were living in Virginia, had just had our, our son. And so I come here to have a circle of remembrance for him. And we remember him, but we also remember other people who've left. So those others who have died and my friends in uh, Walker Church come and join me 
and we spend this time remembering and singing and um, it's a good it's a good thing to do for me it helps me St. Anthony Falls and the and Spirit Island were important to the Dakota people because we felt that it was a place where our ancestors were. Uh, we felt that there were spirits down there uh, at the base of those falls and, and on the island itself. Uh, there was eagles that lived on the island and who would fish. Um, and we felt that our, spirit, our ancestors' spirits were always lived in those eagles. And so for us, it was some place that was very important and very holy. The other tribes have lived here before too. And I believe that, you know, this place was a place that was known to all indigenous people. But this is a spot where you can go and you can rest and get water. And because the Dakota were the last people to inhabit the state before they were relocated and before um, the conflict with the Ojibwe, um, they're the last to, to have used this space. And I believe that, um, again, it was used for ceremony, like I said before. But I also believe that it was like um, a map for the spirit world. Mm -hmm. I believe that this is a place where um, the spirits live. But it's a, it's a dramatic site. It's associated with so see, there's a, there's a case where a Dakota site, which may have been considered a Dakota sacred site, became a, a non-Indian sacred site because it was associated with this famous poem and the photographs and all the rest. And so there's a whole white non-Indian mythology that arose about Minnehaha Falls that's completely different from the stories that Native people been, it's been good to look over at Mounds Park in St. Paul and see uh, the road which used to go right between the mounds. It no longer goes there. Uh, you know, my, my grandpa once said that, uh, you know, people drive their, their Model T's uh, on those. It's like, like a roller coaster, you know. So, and then, you know, they've, they've let the, the grass grow and um, but you know, there's, there's only six of those mounds left where there were hundreds. Last fall, I saw a bunch of people from Parks and Rec, or the um, state park come out here. And they, all those bushes back there, I mean, it was, they were tall and they started cutting down trees and they were cutting them down and it just made me really sad. And I asked them what they were doing. They said, oh, we're doing studying. We're studying these plants and you know, we're studying, and you know, it makes me say, you know, how would you like this somebody cut your arms off or cut you your legs <laughs> off and used it to study? You know, <laughs> I mean, they don't think these are, are these are living beings. Yeah. I mean, they have feelings too, and you know, they feel pain. Um. Well, I feel that it's important that folks are continue to be active in the struggle to make sure that this site is protected because there have been problems ever since the law passed that said that this site was to be protected, that nothing could be done to affect the flow of the water, and some things have happened. Okay? There is the potential of contamination still from the Veterans Administration, and now that the National Park Service has taken over the ownership of the Bureau of Mines land, it's important for us to be diligent in making sure that this is developed as a cultural site which has accurate representation and full involvement of all of the stakeholders, whether it is the Bedote Bede Wakanto and Dakota community being able to have installations installed here and tours and be able to continue to do ceremony at whatever time and have full access. The gates aren't locked. There's access at all times for the community. No, I can't speak for Dakota people, but I'm only telling you what I've been told is that just because the VA hospital is there, it does not mean the place has ceased to be a sacred place. So just because warehouses might be built somewhere or just because 
you know, that does not destroy its meaning to people for whom it's an important place. Another thing is to establish, you know, th these living libraries with our elders as those, uh, um, those who contain that knowledge. Um, but we're losing them very, very quickly. And uh, I've, I've gotten together a lot of books. We were writing new books. Uh, you know, our people, you know, using these technologies as you are, the, the digital storytelling. So I think that the best thing would just to be to recognize what it once was for Indian people, maybe put up a monument or memorial saying that this is what it used to be for us and why it was important for us because it'll, we'll never be able to have it the way that it was. After doing this project, what a sacred site means to me is that a place where our ancestors, our present day elders, and our young people go to pray, also to honor our culture. They teach the future generations about the stories and what happened in the past. This is what I think a sacred site is. Sacred sites are important to many indigenous people, people who are not from this land may not understand the significance of our sacred sites. A sacred site to me means that if our sacred sites are torn down, no matter what they do, we know what was there before and hopefully that they can come to understand that our sacred sites mean a lot to our people. Sacred sites mean a great deal to me. It's a place of peace, love, and happiness. It has a great impact on me in my everyday life. In my opinion, sacred sites made me a better person. A sacred place to me is a place of peace, power, and reuniting of our people, interacting and being together as one. Bye.